Ah, the recap. Full recap. Let's do that, because it's been a while. The long-lost cousin, the bad news, the 26 hours of bus rides with countless late-night stops and seedy depots that felt unsafe, even in the middle of the day. You wouldn't normally find yourself traveling like this, but your cousin bought the tickets. The funeral of Pearl and Scarlet, your cousin's mother and your aunt, seems seemed like something you shouldn't ignore, even considering your own late mother's rocky relationship with this side of the family. Right. Oh, am I glad there's a recap. Holy shit. Welcome to our family's humble estate. Unfortunately, due to the current state of the house, only a few rooms will be safely accessible during your stay. I wouldn't go wandering anywhere else if you value your limbs. The floor have been the floors have been known to give out. Oh god, this feels like forever ago that we saw this. A single deer remains behind, staring down the beam of Stella's flashlight while Gretchen whines and pulls at the harness. Pain, rot. Decay. I forgot we can talk to animals. Oh, Duke. Come on, you, whatever your name is, grab that flashlight and help me line up a good shot. As the creature in the tree line creatures in the tree line grow louder and more numerous, Gretchen violently strains against her harness. Right, and we chose to save Gretchen. You dive forward and scoop Gretchen into your arms just before she manages to wriggle out of her harness. Your eyes fixate on the dark tree line over Duke's shoulder. God damn it! Oof. Stella, keep an eye on her for us. Deputy Franklin, make sure she doesn't get into any more trouble. Sybil, my grandmother called them ditchlings and they are a terrible omen, sign of great suffering and destruction to come. Oh yeah. And then we went into the mines, right? Oh yeah, we spent the night at her place. From now on, you're back at the estate by bedtime. No more impromptu sleepovers. Avery! That is some heavy stuff. No wonder Stella seemed distant. I'm gonna keep my ears open for you. The diner is where everyone comes to gossip, so I hear a lot about what goes on around here. I'll let you know if anyone mentions those monsters or anything else strange or unusual. Oh yeah, we did some research at the library. Have either of you seen Rosalina around town? I don't want to be a helicopter dad, but she hasn't been answering my texts and I wanted to make sure she isn't getting into trouble out there. Hi hi, Dr. Kelly. Oh right, this was the friend's mom, right? We were wondering if it would be okay if, if, it would be okay if Reese could come hang out. Nothing strenuous, we promise. Whatever you two have planned is probably beyond what he can manage right now, anyways. Oh, yeah! Stay home. Wait for the week to end. Don't keep putting yourself in the path of danger. This is all I ask. Ooh. And then we saw her, right, and the, there were a bunch of kids in the mine. A girl carrying a bundle of snacks pops through a hole in the fence and disappears over the crest of a hill. She didn't. <laughs> I guess the old Maxwell place doesn't cut it as a secret hangout spot these days. But the Shaw Mine? That place was shut down like a hundred years ago. After a collapse that killed over a hundred people. You pull out your phone and dial your cousin. That's right! We were being good girl and we... We asked Tabitha for help. I'm in a meeting. Kid just snuck into the Shaw Mine. I figured you should know. Are you serious? Why do things keep happening to me? Whatever. I'll head over there as soon as I can. Stay where you are and wait for me. I don't even know why I'm trying to reason with you. It's not like you'll listen. Yeah, and then we went in anyway. My dad is a foreman at the continuous mining facility and he says they only abandoned this mine because there wasn't enough coal left. So it's actually really safe and we can hang out here whenever we want. Correction, your father was the foreman at the continuous mining facility. We'll see if he even has a job tomorrow morning. Damn, Tabitha! My dad says our house is haunted. Oh yeah! <gasps> is that what we're gonna do? Oh, he goes interrupted by a pair of thunderous knocks. Oh yeah, we had visions and everything. You turn to see Becca and Alex is gone. Rosalina anxiously hovering in front of a small tunnel in the cavern wall. She freezes as you notice her. There's something in the darkness before you that's much louder, though you don't hear it. You can feel it in your chest like the deep growl of a predator. 
What do you think you're doing? Get away from there. Your cousin dives towards you, but not before the light from your phone illuminates the chamber. Right. Goobers, are you alright? You and Tabitha manage to squeeze through the entrance just as the walls of the mine come crashing down. Holy shit, you're okay, thank god. Everyone's accounted for. That was a surprisingly close call. I'm so happy I called Tabitha. <laughs> we could all have died in there. What did you weirdos do? Everything was fine until you showed up. Becca, shut up. Yeah, and they fought, didn't they? Tabitha doesn't say a word as the car cuts along the darkened road. You collapse in Tabitha's dusty guest bed, your head empty of thoughts. After your time in the Shaw Mine, you barely even notice the dust. When you close your eyes, you see the shadowy figures that gathered behind Stella in the mines. Your thoughts are drawn to the carving on the wall and to the visions it imparted upon you. Your thoughts are drawn to the carving on the wall. Oh yeah. Episode 3, baby! It's finally here. Sunshine filters in through the dusty windows of the estate as the dull aches of last night's activities throb in and out of focus. You manage to survive a second night in the town of Scarlet Hollow. Oh, I'm excited. As you pull yourself out of bed, you can feel the soot and grime of the shaw mine still stuck to your skin. Eh, yeah, I would like a shower. Cleanliness is next in manner, Jelinas. You step into the guest bedroom and into the shower. The water is hot and surprisingly enough, clean. As steam fills your lungs and soot washes down the drain, you think about Duke, scrub feverishly trying to scrape the memory from your skin. Think about Sybil's warning, the worst is yet to come. Think about Wayne and wonder how many times he's watched you unseen. Think about someone special. Think about finally being out of this hellhole and safe in your own bed. Hmm. I would say Sybil's warning, but I think this is a good one. I think about Stella, <laughs> your intrepid cryptid hunting companion. Kanika, Avery, Oscar, Reese, Stella's mysterious friend. No, I only have thoughts for Stella. Everything the two of you have been through since you got into town. You're done here. Turn off the faucet and dry yourself off. I like Stella. Time to start your day. Mm. What's out the window? You can only imagine how beautiful the garden must have been in its heyday. A different... A different you might have been taken away by this view, drifting into fantasies about how you might have tidied up... Tidied it up and enjoyed tea by the fountain. But a lot has happened since your first ride into town. What's in the closet? Ooh. How long were you going to have slept in this room without realizing you shared the space with that doll? <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't get up and move while you're not around. Hell no. I think it's just a doll. Some things are best left untouched. Um, I think both of them is good. We went out, the three of us, so... You pull out your phone and open up your group chat. Last night was terrible, what's the game plan? Y'all, I actually bonded with Tabitha last night. <laughs> Can't wait to ghost bust tonight. Hell yeah! It'll probably be a bit before you get a response. Head downstairs. You've done everything you wanted to do up here. It's time to start your day. You enter the kitchen to find your cousin in the midst of devouring a pint of banana chocolate chunk. Ah, she isn't alone. Who this? It's me! <laughs> Frufru glares at you. Oh, Frufru! From her usual spot on the counter as a red-haired woman busies herself trying to tidy as best she can. A vile woman, destroying the natural order of my kitchen. Tabitha's gaze swivels from the woman to you, her glare intensifying. Bonjour, Frufru! <laughs> uh, I would probably introduce myself first. 
Hi, I'm Goobers. Good morning, I'm Janie. Just here to do my little weekly cleaning. Whatever cleaning Miss Tabitha will let me do, at least. I could have this place looking brand new, you know? Don't go making any big renovations or moving anything around. I like knowing where my stuff is. Okie dokie! It's so nice to finally meet you, Goobers. I mean, I guess I did meet you on Monday when you popped into the diner. Did I? Janie. Seeing someone somewhere and meeting them face to face are two completely different things, I suppose. I don't remember her at all. It's been like two years since we were in the diner, literally. <laughs> Thanks. All I'm trying to say is that it's wonderful to finally actually meet you. And I'm so happy part of the family is here to keep Miss Tabitha what with everything that's... Janie! Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Tabitha. Am I being too much again? Aww. Bonjour, Fufu! <laughs> ah, bonjour, sacre bleu! Do not think you can just bonjour me just because I slept at the foot of your bed last night. I still despise you. <laughs> Three humans at once. This is abhorrent. Your stink will linger here for hours. How am I to bear it? <laughs> I see you talking to my cat again. Are you sure he didn't get hit on the head last night? I mean, I talked to my cat. Bonjour, Bibi. Are you sleeping comfortably? You don't say good morning to your pets? I always make sure to talk to my farm cats and alpaca like they're people. To me, they kind of are. Ice cream for breakfast? Oh, Tabitha is living the life. I haven't had ice cream in so long. <sighs> Stare in silence. I wouldn't judge her for having ice cream for breakfast. She probably has a lot to deal with. How's it going? There was a massive mine collapse on my property last night. I can practically feel the whispers of unionization already. Tabitha takes one last spoonful of ice cream, then discards the empty container, turning to you with her trademark scowl. Let's get going. I got an errand to run in town. Every time I've left you here alone, something terrible is wound up happening. So you're coming with me. Let's get going. Okay. Uh, meet you outside. Cousin bonding time. <laughs> All right, let's go. But I haven't had breakfast. You can't just take away my freedom like that. I don't need a babysitter. I'll meet you outside. Given your track record, if I let you out of my sight, you'd probably just disappear into the wild wilderness, only to return in the middle of the night after burning down City Hall. If I'm lucky, you'll give me a call at some point between dousing the building in kerosene and lighting the match. Janie, look up when you leave, please, and don't go rearranging anything. I'll know. She's so cute! As you're ready to leave, Janie approaches from the far side of the kitchen. Tabitha remains between the two of you, impatiently tapping her foot. Oh, Goobers, before you go, I heard about what happened last night. I mean, I heard about it before Miss Tabitha mentioned it just now, and then I heard it again. I just wanted to say that I'm so sorry you got caught up in that. You two did right by those kids, though. What a blessing. Everyone getting out of that situation, all right? Keen eye. You only come in once a week, right? What do you do with the rest of your time? Last night was a lot. You should get out of town. Any weird creatures? Do you know anything about a guy named Wayne? Ooh. I'll start with keen eye. Odd jobs, mostly. Weeding gardens, cleaning houses, washing kids, that sort of thing. That's kind of nice. My husband's the pastor, so a lot of my time spent at the church doing things for the community. That must be nice to have, like, nothing's really set in stone. You kind of just do different things. Keeps it fresh. Poor Daniel, he's been going absolutely stir-crazy since we've moved here, but with nobody really attending sermons. Aww. It'd probably do him a lot of good to talk, to talk you through your worries. Hmm. Having a priest on speed dial seems handy. <laughs> um, I'm not Christian, but thank you for the offer. I don't want to be rude, though. Let's do this. Thank you for the offer. 
That's all right. My Daniel likes to talk with all sorts of people. He just wants to extend support to anyone who needs it. That's nice. Feel free to stop by the church anytime. The door is always open. Uh, I want to ask about Wayne. I'm going to stop the two of you right there. Goobers, I'm busy and not in the mood to stand around waiting while you play Nancy Drew. Uh, with my cleaning lady right in front of me. Nosy Nancy. We're leaving. Bye, Janie. Alrighty then. Be safe out there, you two. Hmm. Let's go. The ride to town is uneventful. Your cousin unsurprisingly more focused on the road than on making conversation. All right, we're just popping into the general store for a few minutes. Um, what are we doing there? Picking up tea from Sybil. What kind of tea? I don't know, the kind Sybil makes. She makes a bunch of weird stuff. I don't know what all of it's called. Quit interrogating me about tea blends. Jeez. Um... After everything that's happened the past two days, it's nice to just go on an errand. Exactly. Hm. You and Tabitha turn as the door to the general store bursts open. A flustered Kanika exits, shouting behind her. Fine, okay, keep coddling him. Keep letting him get away with stuff you never would have let me so much as think about. I'm sick of carrying this family. Damn, Kanika. Other people and their drama. If more people kept, thi kept things to themselves, they'd be a lot happier. <laughs> it's not exactly how that works. <laughs> Would you call yourself happy? What are you burying? Tabitha pulls back, surprised by your question. What did I just say? Yeah, I'm happy. Whatever. We're burning daylight. Come on already. Hmm. The bells of the general store chime as you cross, cross the threshold. The smells of old wood and steamy herbal tea flood your senses, making you feel instantly at home. We might have to make some tea halfway through this episode. Good morning, you two. Hope you're doing well after last night's activities. Morning. Is the new blend ready? Of course. Goobers, if you'd like to keep Miles company, Tabitha and I will just be a minute. Um, I wouldn't really interfere with their family issues. What if it makes fun of me for being old? Can I have some tea? Oh sure, if you're willing to wait a bit. I wasn't expecting to entertain, so I didn't put any water on. I'll go and do that now. Never hurts to have fresh hot water on hand. That face. Can we get this over with first? <laughs> that damn smile is the achievement. <laughs> That's literally what I was thinking. I was like, there's that face again. <laughs> of course, of course. Priorities. Sybil motions for Tabitha to follow, and they both disappear into the tea room, closing the door behind them with a tinkling of bells. Why can't I come with them? Mm -hmm. Subtle. Shh. I know it took a little longer than you'd hoped, but this was a fair this was fairly short notice. Sybil pauses, and a moment later you hear footsteps move to the far end of the tea room. She and Tabitha resume their discussion, their voices hushed. You can only make out bits and pieces of what they're saying. Is there make sure this is all not inside. Outside then, don't assume you know. I know what I'm Oh, someone comes in. Oh, who dis? Oh, excuse me. Ah, you're Goobers, aren't you? My name is Bo. Oh no, Duke's son? I'm so sorry. Policeman told me you saw what happened to my daddy. Oh my god. Have they found his body yet? They seem to want to pin it on me. Folks don't seem to care your dad is dead, do they? I'm so sorry for your loss. Thank you. Policeman said he might just be out hunting somewhere, but me and my mama both know he ain't coming back. 
Mama's pretty broken up about it. I'm trying to hold it together since I'm the man of the house now, but it ain't easy. Me and him was supposed to bring Big Betty to the state fair this week, but now she's now he's gone, and as of this morning, so is she. Big Betty? I suppose if I'm not going to the fair, I may as well make myself useful and get out into the woods and look for what's left of my daddy. He was there, right? Can you tell me where to look so I can try and find him? I don't think you want to see him like that. Have you seen anything strange on the farm? Can't tell you where he is, it's not safe. He died on the... Uh, I don't think you want to see him like that. It's really bad. I'm a farm boy. Blood don't bother me none. I just want to find my daddy, even if he's like one of them horror movie monsters. He's still my daddy and he shouldn't be out in them woods where any animal can take a piece of him. Um, have you seen anything strange lately? Not really, no, but I've been awful busy with, with everything that's been happening. Them chickens keep disappearing, though. Is Big Betty one of them? Nah, she ain't chicken. Big Betty is our prized pumpkin. <gasps> I love pumpkin! She was a big lady, too. I expect she was at least 2,000 pounds? It's like a th thousand kilos? Yeah. It's like 900 kilos. Pinkie pie! <laughs> oh, pumpkin pie. I don't remember... I, I remember saying I want a pumpkin pie so long ago during a stream and I still haven't had it. <sighs> Not too easy to move something like that. Could be she rolled off down a hill, but I can't be looking for her just yet with what, what with everything going on. How does a fucking 2,000 pound pumpkin disappear? Um, I don't think he would believe me about ditchlings. He died on the northeast edge of town, off the Asgina Trail. Thank you, Goobers. I appreciate you trying to help us out. I don't rest easy knowing he's out there somewhere, all by his lonesome. Please tell Miss Scarlet I'm sorry about her mama. Oh, Tabitha is Miss Scarlet. Tabitha and Sybil are still in the tea room. Ah, oh, Stella! Oh my god, hey, I overslept. That's great. Gotta get those Zs. Still gotta make myself breakfast. If y'all wanna if y'all want, you can swing by. Otherwise, meet at the li library and figure out a plan. I want breakfast! I think I'm good. Just had a big fight, not really hungry. Gonna chill in my van for a while if you wanna hang out though. Otherwise, see you guys at the library. Plenty of time before dinner at Reese's house. Swing by Stella's! Hell yeah. Bye, Tabitha. Knock. You politely knock. Knock again louder this time. Your shout is immediately met by the yelps of an excited Gretchen. She's here, Stella! She's here! <laughs> I forgot I could talk to animals. <laughs> you can barely make out the slow and quiet shuffling of feet over Gretchen's excitement. Good morning! An exhausted Stella groggily stares at you from her doorway. Hey, sorry, I'm a bit of a mess. I guess I slept in. A lot. Give me a minute to finish getting dressed and I can make us some breakfast. How chill would that be? I always kind of miss that, that I don't have like friends like that who can just be like, Hey, I'm bored right now. You want to come over? And like just hang out, not really do anything in particular. I always envy that of other friends. That you can just be like, I'm hungry. Have you had breakfast yet? Why don't just have breakfast together? Like something random like that and just hang out. Ah, <sighs> I miss that. Stella talks from the other room as she changes. What are you feeling for breakfast? Pancakes, eggs and biscuits? Maybe just a classic scramble? I also have a toaster waffle, if that's more your speed. I may have already had my breakfast, but that won't stop me from partaking in whatever scraps may fall to the floor, of course. <laughs> Um, pancakes, biscuits, scramble, tofu scramble, toaster waffle is fine by me. Honestly, all of that sounds good. 
Can you pick something for me? I don't want the burden of free will. <laughs> Biscuits it is. Ah, yes. We can even make them together. Yee! Oh, nice outfit. I used to have a jumpsuit just like Stella's, but I'm afraid mine has been torn to shreds from years of use. <laughs> that would be so cute, matching outfits. Let's get started. <gasps> Flirt! That's a cute jumpsuit. That's what I was saying anyway. Most certainly is, isn't it? Oh, thanks. I kind of picked it out just for you. Ah! Mm -hmm. I guess you might call it unlucky since I've never actually seen a ghost. But hey, after the past couple of nights, maybe we could use a bit of bad luck. The kind of bad luck where we don't find anything, of course. Don't want to jinx us. Should we start on food? I'm starving. Um, let's get started. Yes, I am here for that enthusiasm. Biscuits from scratch seem to seems to intimidate a lot of people, but once you get it down, they're super quick and easy. How about you mix the butter into the dry ingredients while I get everything else ready? You gotta get in there with your hands. Just squish the butter into the flour until all the big chunks are gone. Oh, I want to cook something again. This isn't my first biscuit rodeo. <laughs> Squish that mix! <laughs> I'll get started on the gravy while you're at it. Anyway, seems like you got an earlier start than I did today. Anything interest interesting happened while I was asleep? Did Tabby give you a hard time? I met Bo at the store. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Tabitha was planning on babysitting me all day and managed to slip off. Not a whole lot happened. Bo. That poor guy. How's he doing? Big Betty's gone missing. How does a 2,000 pound pumpkin just disappear? That's what I was saying! Uh, cops still haven't found Duke's body. He says he wants to look himself. Gosh, that sounds dangerous. I hope he's safe. What's Gretchen looking at? Gretchen's just like... Managed to slip off. I'm glad you're here. It's been really nice spending time with you, even if a lot of it has been the two of us running in terror from the monster of the day. She blushing! I see that blush. I personally prefer that you came alone. My Stella could use better company like yourself in her life. Not a whole lot happened other than that. Well, no news is probably good news, right? Pumped for ghost hunting tonight? Extremely pumped. I hope it's scary, craving adrenaline. After everything we've been through, I'm pretty nervous. I'd rather we didn't do it. Hmm. Can't be worse than the last two nights. I am extremely pumped. I love this kind of stuff. Excellent. Me too. There's a ghost. I hope it tries to communi communicate with us instead of scare us. I want to know what it's like to be dead, or if there are more ghosts out there. And hey, if this is anything like any other ghost hunt I've been, ever been on, it'll be a much appreciated breather. Unless you count Tommy knockers as ghosts. Oh yeah, the knocking miners, right? Or Wayne. Well, if y'all are excited, count me in on the enthusiasm. <laughs> How's the squishing coming along? Coffee's finished. I think I'm done. Eat some of the flour and butter mix. I think I'm done. Stella reaches over and takes the bowl from you. Looks perfect. Now I just have to add the wet stuff and we're in business. Don't worry. I'll do the whole rollout and full part. I know what that might be intimidating. You wash your hands as Stella adds her milk concoction to the flour mixture, stirring a few times before turning to the counter for the final steps. Ah, oh, this is gonna be so tasty. I've never had, like, freshly made biscuits. Our little babies are ready to go in the oven. If you don't mind, I'm gonna make an egg for myself while we wait. Can I have an egg too? I want egg and bacon. That would be so good. The more the merrier. Hope you like over easy. 
Stella cracks an egg into the fresh pan and gets back to work on the stove. Thanks for coming over, by the way. It gets lonely here sometimes. Surprised to hear her say it, but it's true. It's so nice to finally see her have a cellar, a cellar, a collar again. Um, let's start with Tabitha. I know she's been mean, but Tabitha obviously still cares about you. Sorry, Tabitha's kind of a jerk to you. She's so mean. She doesn't want you around. You used to be closer. What happened? I'll spill the beans. We kind of dated. <gasps> oh my god, you go through the family now. <laughs> it was never really official. She might tell it a little differently. But as far as I'm concerned, she was my first relationship. Mm. Not that she's my type or anything. Honestly, that's a lot closer to you. Oh! What was it like dating her? She's hilarious, and I don't know, it's hard to explain what draws you to somebody. I like the challenge of breaking down all those walls she'd build up around herself. It was kind of like taming a wild animal, you know? Hmm. But it all just kind of stopped after high school. I guess we didn't see each other every day, and she was always busy at the mine, so there wasn't much of a chance to hang out anymore. I wish we could have stayed friends. I could have used someone like her after the big accident. Kanika was at school already, Reese was sick, and Tabitha wouldn't even return my calls. It was... well, it's ancient history. Can't change the past. Hmm. Hmm. Why not hang out with Avery? How's the food coming? What happened to your parents? Stella tenses. Car crash. They were taking me to college. Oh shit. Didn't wind up going to college. Not much more to be said. Oh yeah, I wouldn't either. Jeez. I'd just probably go back home. Do nothing. Did you ever try and go back to school? Stella stares down at the breakfast food sizzling away in the pan. No, didn't have to. I inherited this house, so I didn't need to worry about where to live. And why leave town? I know everyone here. I don't know anybody out there. Except you, now. Hmm. That's why you've been so nervous about cars. I'm so sorry. It's okay. It happened. Nothing I can do about that. Yeah. It means a lot to me that you care, I just, I really don't like talking about it. Let's talk about Kanika. It's nice that she's back in town, but I wish it were under better circumstances. She's so busy with the store, I don't know how she does it. It's been nice hanging out with her more the past couple of days. Though again, better circumstances would be nice. Uh, do you ever hang out with Avery? That's a good question. I guess I just don't know him very well. Them. I grew up with Reese and Kanika and Tabby. Even you don't seem like a stranger, what with who you're related to. Avery moved here a few years ago, kind of close on the heels of all that stuff with the accident, so I guess I wasn't really in the right headspace for making new friends. I do go to their parties, but now that you mention it, it is weird that I haven't thought to try and hang out with them outside of that. Should text them sometime. Hmm. I wonder if we're gonna meet Reese. Heck yeah, we are! <laughs> if Dr. Kelly tries to turn us away again, we can just sneak in. Nothing will stand in the way of us and friendship. What's he like? I'm not about to ruin a cool and mysterious introduction by telling you. I think you'll like him, though. Um. His mom's got it rough. Yeah, I can't imagine being in her shoes. Her whole life is taking care of him at this point, you know? I don't know what he has. 
Whatever he's sick with has got to just be a Reese thing. His mom isn't sick. I've seen him a couple times in as many years as I- and I'm totally fine. Hmm. Do you think you'll always live here? Have you ever thought of moving away? Hard to say. This house means a lot to me. This town means a lot to me. And I haven't had to think about where to live or where to do. Where to go. But I guess I could see myself leaving for the right reasons. Or for the right person. Oh! How's the food coming? <laughs> Timer goes off and Stella excitedly pops open the oven, pulling out a tray of delectable biscuits. I mean, she seems to have a good thing going on though. Yeah, you inherit the house from your parents. You have, you have a YouTube channel that's doing pretty well. I feel like she's kind of like set. You don't really have to change anything. Breakfast is served. Oh, looks so good. The two of you wouldn't mind saving me just a couple of scraps. That meal smells absolutely delectable. Fresh biscuit, all right. Still not as good as the diners, but if I could capture that kind of perfection, there would be no mountains left for me to conquer. <laughs> Better to have the thrill of a challenge. So glad you came over today. I've been having a little bit of a hard time sleeping the past couple nights. I'm sure you can relate. I think I needed a nice slow morning like this, just hanging out with you. Ho ho! Phone's going off. Oh shit, I almost forgot. Mayor Jimmy Day. On top of being a great show, it's probably a good excuse to meet up with Oscar and start talking ghosts. Gretchen scoffs at the mention of Mayor Jimmy. Mayor, my rear end. I certainly never voted for him. <laughs> Gretchen says she didn't vote for him. <laughs> Well, of course she didn't. Gretchen's a dog. Dogs get vote. <laughs> Maybe they should, though. How would that even work? Little paw prints? Ah, oh, never mind. <laughs> Let's scarf this down and head on over. I'll make sure to bring some biscuits for the mayor. Can't believe Stella's bringing the good stuff for that low life. Gretchen doesn't seem to like him very much. Because she barked? Well, that won't stop me from bringing biscuits. It's always good to be polite. Let's go. Have we met, uh, Mayor Jimmy? You and Stella make your way to the library. It's busier than usual. Is it the dude who runs the library? A small crowd has already formed in the corner of the main foyer. Now we're just waiting on Kanika. There she is. Hey, whole gang's here. I've been waiting to introduce Goobers to the mayor for like the entire time I've known her. Okay, so we haven't met him. It'll be worth it. Trust us. All right, shall we? Hmm? Oh, security. <laughs> oh, that's Mayor Jimmy. He's a dog. <laughs> Not only is this mayor a dog, but judging from the series of portraits lining the walls, every mayor of Scarlet Hollow has been a dog. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can tell this dog is the mayor from his little sash and his fancy top hat. <laughs> There's a regal air about him, almost as if he knows the position of authority he's been elected to. And unless you're mistaken, the serious man by his side is Deputy Franklin, one of the policemen you spoke to following your encounter in the woods on Monday. Good morning, citizen. I don't believe we've met. He holds out his paws to shake your hand. Okay. Lovely to meet you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> You take his little paw in your hand, but the burly scared detail stops you. No paw shaking. Only head pets and ear scratches allowed. I must apologize for my security detail. He has my best interests at heart, but he can be a little gruff at times. Um, Gretchen says you're a low life. He's a dog. I knew he'd be a dog. We're doomed, aren't we? I knew he'd be a dog. And what bearing does that have on anything? Ah, uh, the tabby ruin it for you. This town has had a dog as mayor since the early 1900s. That's just how we do things around here for some reason. The best part of living in Scarlet Hollow, besides the nature. And all my friends and Winnie's biscuits. Oh, and the close-knit small town community, of course. But having a dog mayor is the close fifth. No contest. Now, is there something I can help you with? You're not one of my constituents. I'd like to make sure I'd spend plenty of time with the voters. <laughs> Deputy Franklin? Not when I'm off duty. Oh, this guy? 
Mayor scoffs off duty. Services you render for me are more important than your police work. Hmm. You still haven't found Duke's body. What are you doing here? Like I said, off duty. And I don't make it a habit of discussing of official police business with out of towners. And especially not with suspicious out of towners. Now, now, let's hear the stranger out. Tour tourism is part of this town's lifeblood, after all. Goobers hasn't done anything wrong. I was there. This discussion is over, Miss Richmond. Unless you'd like to be added to our suspicious person list as well. Now meet the mayor like a good citizen and move along. Hmm. Something very serious going into town. We need your help. We're doomed. Let's say we need their help. Murmur stir in the crowd behind you as you relay the danger to the mayor. Of course, the pet disappearances. I've been made aware of the situation. But what do you expect me to do about it? It's autumn. That's tourist season in Scarlet Hollow. I can't turn away the lifeblood of this town, not with the mine faltering the way it is. There was a mine collapse last night. We don't need any more news of disaster coming out of Scarlet Hollow. Do you understand? Um, so you know there are monsters laying eggs in local animals and you're going to just let it happen? The crowd behind you intensifies as you continue your conversation. <laughs> don't be ridiculous. I'm sure that whatever is causing the, this, 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 these disappearances is just a bear or a mountain lion. We've all smelled them up in those hills. They'll move on soon enough. This is a southern town. Plenty of people are armed around these parts. They'll take care of the problem before it gets out of hand. And in the meantime, it's best not to cause a panic. I'm a pillar of this community. It's my job to proje project strength to my constituents. I've heard just about enough from you, Jimmy. <laughs> Look at you, putting on a show in front of your adoring fans while the dogs of this town are snatched up by monsters in the woods, hoping the humans will clean it all up for you. Oh, Sarah, thanks for the gift itself. Thank you. When are you finally going to do something meaningful, meaningful for the hairier citizens of Scarlet Hollow? <laughs> Now, Miss Gretchen, there's no need. Scraps never would have let those things prowl the woods for so long. And yet you sit back, waiting for the humans to notice and letting more innocent dogs suffer. You know, I almost lost my life to those things the other night. And my goodness, haven't you heard about poor Duke? Now, Gretchen, a lot of the those were old dogs. It's fair for me to fair for me to assume they simply went to the big farm upstate. <laughs> Don't you dare talk to me about old dogs. Um, Sally, your dog is yelling at the mayor. <laughs> wow, Gretchen is barking a lot. I don't... I think she doesn't like the mayor. <laughs> uh, scraps would have been out in those woods at the first sign of trouble. Tearing out the throats of any creatures who dare threaten the dogs of Scarlet Hollow. Yet yeah, he, here he is, posing for the little rectangles like nothing is wrong in this town. Jeez. Whoa, Gretchen, calm down. <laughs> Mr. Franklin, I think now's a good time to dispose of this riffraff. Miss Richmond, I'm gonna have to ask you and your dog to step away from the mayor. Should have known better. These two have never been able to get along. <laughs> Ingrate! Ne'er do well! You dog! <laughs> okay. Well, that was a surprise. Oh! Who this? You look kinda scary. Oh! Do you think he's, um, the priest? Before you can catch up to your companions, you're intercepted by a nervous man with a cross around his neck. Sounds like old Gretchen and the mayor have may have some unresolved issues, wouldn't you say? Pastor Daniel. I take it you're goobers. Everyone's been buzzing about you. So sorry about your aunt, but I'm sure she's in a better place now. He's kind of creepy. I doubt Perlan's in a better place. Sounds like she was awful. <laughs> we both know she's in hell. Jeez. Don't believe in an afterlife. Thank God I... I've been hoping to find a priest. Know anything about ghosts? Janie mentioned you. That's probably the best one. 
That woman is the light of my life. I'm so glad she's there to help your cousin through this rough batch. Back off, preacher man. I ain't buying what you're selling. <laughs> I should go. It was nice meeting you, though. Of course, if you find yourself in need of counseling or spiritual guidance, you know where to find me. That sounds lovely, thank you. Thanks for the offer, but I'm fine, not really. Yeah, just be nice. Ugh. Really? Oh, that's great. Sorry, I just don't usually get positive responses when I ask folks if they want to come up to the church. Anytime that works for you, just swing by. I'm sure I'll be around. It was lovely to meet you, and have a blessed day, goobers. Hmm. Pastor leaves you be and joins the line to see the mayor. Nothing to do now but catch up with your companions. Oh, hello. <laughs> Oscar. Are you, are you sure we can't just get it over with while the sun is up? I don't know if I can handle getting scared shitless in the dark two nights in a row. I wish we could, especially since I'm not particularly excited about going back in there after dark either. But I'm pretty sure it only comes out when the sun goes down. There's no way I'm going in until the pr that spirit is at full power. I want to be sure we get the best evidence possible. This could be my one shot to get real proof of ghosts. I'm not gonna waste it just because I'm impatient. Y'all are gonna be the death of me. I just hope it's possible to get rid of this thing. This is a pretty serious ghost infestation? Is that what you call something like this? I believe it's called a haunting, but ghost infestation also sounds good. I suppose we're the ghost hunters, so we can call it whatever we want. Anyway, I'll be bringing all the ghost hunting supplies anyone could ever need, so we should be set on preparations. The only thing y'all need to bring is an open mind. Uh, power of friendship. I still don't think ghosts are real, starting to get cold feet about the ghost hunt. Don't worry, Oscar. We'll fix it. Heck yeah, we will. Whatever this is, we'll get to the bottom of it tonight. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Well, if we're not going to... If we're not doing the hunt now, I guess we should have a head over to Rhesus. Absolutely. Come on, goobers. Time to go bother our friend. I'm gonna get back to it. See y'all tonight. So about the mayor. The dog cares more about tourist money than protecting the town. <laughs> I'm not sure we can count on his support. <laughs> He's a dog. <laughs> Excuse me, my dear Stella. But I find that perspective quite demeaning. We canines are man's best friend for a reason. I'm at Pastor Daniel. It was only a matter of time until he tried to pull you aside for grief counseling. When my dad died, I had to ban him from the general store for a week. Oh. He wouldn't stop leaving these little pamphlets at the checkout. I don't know where he finds so many. Seems like a good man. His vibes were bad. He and Janie keep trying to make me go to church. Not a lot of people go to church around here. It's not like folks in this town aren't Christians, but he's so creepy. No one wants to sit in the pews in that rundown old church and listen to that guy. Plus the guy was grinning through the entirety of my dad's funeral. What a ghoul. And I don't mean that in a stigmatizing mental illness kind of way. There's just this little siren that goes off every time I see him that tells me to get away from him. Yeah, he seemed creepy. That's exactly how I would describe it too. The whole town feels the same way. Now that I think about it, he must be pretty lonely. He can look for friends somewhere else. Mm. I invite Tabitha secretly. Should we invite Avery? I don't... I don't feel like Tabitha would be nice to have in this situation. And Avery, we don't really know that well either. I don't think I would invite either. <laughs> the three of you leave the library for an early dinner at Reese's. Oh, cool house. Once You once again find yourself in front of Reese's house. A cold hesitation grips you as the building looms over the hilltop. Though it's only early afternoon, it feels much later, the sun already sinking behind the tall mountains that surround Scarlet Hollow. We're a little early. What if Dr. Kelly yells at us? There's no such thing as early when you're hanging out with friends. That's just extra time you get to spend together. Okay, but what if she yells at us? <laughs> T 
Too late. The door swings open. That's Reese. Huh. Reese. Oh my god, dude. It's been ages. You must be Goobers, right? Heard a lot about you. Stella's been relentless about making sure I got all the Goober updates. My goodness gracious, there's something that smells terribly, terribly off about that boy. Get away from my Stella, you fiend. Oh. What's wrong with him? Crunches starts yelping at Reese, straining against Stella's grip as she tries to get between them. Are they here already? I knew you'd show up early, Stella. And you brought the dog. Great. Thought she might cheer Reese up. I don't know what's gotten into her all of a sudden. Dog stays outside. But it's okay, Stella. We can let her chill in my van for a bit. I'll run the AC and leave her some treats. You know I always have some of those easy chewed dog jerkies stashed away. The gall. The gumption. This is a violation of my rights. <laughs> but we go everywhere together. Do you want to come in or not? Kanika nervously tugs Stella away towards her van. You keep her safe from that monster, Goobers. You hear? You don't let a feather of harm fall on my darling Stella. He doesn't seem dangerous. What about you, Goobers? Are you coming in? Uh, why doesn't Gretchen like you, Reese? Let's, let's ask. No clue. She's always made a fuss around me. Reese doesn't do well with dogs. Now come on in. Let's get this over with. Hmm. We follow Reese and Dr. Kelly inside. Stella and Kanika aren't far behind. Awkward! The house feels cold. Not only is there an odd chill in the air, but the building itself feels too sterile. Uncomfortably tidy to the point where you're nervous to touch anything. If it weren't for the aroma of store-bought dinner rolls baking in the oven and the unsettling artwork hanging on the walls, you'd be half convinced you'd wander into a real estate showing. So, how can I lend a hand? By sitting down at the table and not puttering around in my kitchen. I made sure everything was done well in advance, so the only thing left are the dinner rolls, which shouldn't be long. Then we can have a quick dinner and you can leave my house and go on about your business. I was kind of hoping to see Reese's new art. We still have time now, right? You aren't seriously considering subjecting your friends to your disaster of a room, are you? Damn, Mom, chill. It's not that bad. You can still see the floor. Dr. Kelly raises a single questioning eyebrow. I don't mind a little mess. Yeah, I doubt it could be any worse than the way I keep my room. Yeah, okay, fine. As long as you stay out of the kitchen. I don't care what you get up to. Cool. We'll just be downstairs. You won't even know we're here. You make your way towards the basement stairs. Yeah, that's pretty messy, but yeah, you can still see the floor. The basement is what you might expect out of a tortured artist who spends all his time confined to his studio. Discarded canvases line its edges while trash and sketches leak out from their piles in the corners of the room, hiding the bare cement floor. Ghoulish faces coat the walls and paint, staring out at their creator. Your mom is so scary. She can be a little intense, kind of overprotective, which I guess makes sense. Anyway, make yourself comfortable. You'll have to forgive the mess. I've been distracted lately and I haven't been cleaning. So many options. Okay. Uh, your mom really looks out for you. Stella told you everything that's happened the past couple days. Your whole situation is going to be rough. What are you sick with? <laughs> Sorry, Reese. Goobers is pretty direct. <laughs> it's okay. I've come to terms with the way the rest of my life is going to be. You're so macabre, Reese. You make it sound like you've been sentenced to death. You haven't, right? Not exactly. No one really knows what's wrong with me, but it's been getting worse. I can barely keep most food down. My skin always itches like there are worms crawling underneath it. I could live for a long time or a short time. No one's sure. But I'm definitely not going to get better. Whatever time I have left is going to be miserable. So, I've done my mourning. The best years are behind me. My future is unknowable. But one day, I'll wind up in a pine box, just like everyone else, and I'm okay with that. Dang, Reese, I may be goth, but that's real ni nihilistic? Shit. We'll make sure to come by more often from here on out. Friendship heals all wounds, right? 
Thanks, guys, but you really shouldn't worry about me. I have my art. I'm doing fine, really. Hmm. Well, I'll join the worms one day. What's your diagnosis? She's really persistent. <laughs> I'm afraid the answer isn't very illuminating because it's not any one in particular thing. It's just a whole mess of nasty little things that add up to one big diagnosis of bad genes. Guess I pulled the losing card in the DNA lottery. And hey, it isn't all that bad. Some of it is just weird, like this. Reese pulls on the skin of his arm. It stretches unnaturally. His nails, too. They're super long. Hyperelasticity. Kind of cool, right? Whoa. Does that not hurt? Nope. Feels fine. Like I said, it gets itchy under the skin sometimes. But I don't know if that's the elasticity, the medicine, or some other part of my condition. What if... What if the mom is giving him meds to keep him sick? Your mom really looks out for you. That's one way to look at it, I guess. Possible she's gotten a bit of an edge lately. I think my condition has been stressing her out a lot. It used to be something she thought she could fix, but I think she's kind of accepted that it's just something we have to manage. But even if she's a little harsh, harsh she means well. It's like you said, she's just looking out for me. Though I guess I have to wonder if isolating you from your friends is really looking out for you. I don't think... Does she do that? Uh, she did turn us away yesterday. You came by yesterday? She didn't tell me. I was probably just asleep. She must have forgotten to mention it. I don't know if I would call that isolating. She didn't want to wake me up. I don't think that's her being controlling or anything. Not to cast any doubt on that, but she did say I couldn't bring you any food. She knows that that's how I show my friends how much I appreciate them. She knows I can work around all kinds of allergies and intolerances. Not gonna lie, felt weird. I don't know. My body's pretty particular when it comes to food. She just prefers to have full control over what I eat, so... Ah, uh, okay. Maybe that does sound controlling. <laughs> but it's all for a good reason. If I eat the wrong thing, it could lead to a lot of misery for me. So she has to regulate my food. I don't know. I feel like... I feel like he's just saying that because... His mom tells him that. I don't know, maybe he can eat more than he thinks. So Estella told you about everything that's happened. Your art, quite a movie collection. You three go way back. God, there's so much to talk about. Estella told you what happened? She told me all about what you guys found out there. I wish I could see some of it for myself, but you know. He gestures towards the walls. Are you sure you can't just sneak out one of these nights? The doc isn't keeping me prisoner here, Stella. I'm sick. You know that. Sorry, man. I didn't mean to. Nothing to apologize for. I appreciate the effort. Really, I do. There's just nothing you can really rescue me from. That die has already been cast. But we were talking about the past couple of days, weren't we? Any thoughts on ditchlings? Yeah, they've been coming up to my window at night. Wait, really? Is that why you texted me that they looked like something out of your nightmares? Yeah, I thought I was hallucinating. I hadn't put it together that we might have been seeing the same thing until just now. I've been sketching them, actually. Tell me what you think. Oh, that's them. That's exactly what I saw on my way home last night. What does it mean that they've been lurking around here, though? I don't know, but I like the company. They're kind of beautiful in a sad way, if you ask me. Agree to disagree. Those things are going to be stuck in my nightmares until the day I die. Hmm, Wayne. Who? You know, the guy who's been following goobers around being all ominous. Oh yeah, the slasher creep. I appreciate the classic Jason vibe he has going on. Here's hoping he doesn't live up to the look, for all our sakes. Do you think the town is doomed? I think everything is probably doomed at some point, but I guess that's answering a different question. Do I think the town of Scarlet Hollow is on the brink of collapse? Probably not, but it's not like I have a lot of percept perspective on what it's like out there. Could be rioting on Main Street and if Stella or the doc didn't tell me, I just wouldn't know. I would totally tell you if there was a riot. 
Would Dr. Kelly tell you, though? I mean, yeah, I hope so. But the point I'm trying to make is that other people are my eyes out there. What do you think of Tabitha? She was always so distant and mean. Probably would have thought she had it out for me personally if she wasn't like that towards everyone. Or if I thought she even knew my name. But people change. Maybe she's nicer now. She's still terrible. You guys just never took the chance to get to know her. She's actually really funny and sweet. I'll pass. Thanks. Art. Exquisite, grotesque, grotesque, emo, a lot of it. This stuff, I think it's really impressive. I like horror art. Exquisite. Thank you, Goobers. I don't really make my art for other people, so it's always a nice surprise when it resonates with someone, especially considering how personal these pieces are. Having other people look at them sometimes feels like I'm having them look over a raw wound. You know, I still got that painting I stole from you back in high school. I even took it to co college with me. You make good stuff, dude. Oh no. You should get rid of that old thing. It's ancient. Knowing there are people out there who might see something I made in high school is horrifying. No way, it's rad and people compliment it all the time. You should- you could gain a real following if you ever posted these online, you know? Nah, I think I'm okay sticking to sparsely populated late night live streams. That's all the social media I can handle. I don't know how you do it, Stella. Having to exist in front of all those people all the time. Knowing some version of you lives in their heads, knowing they expect something out of you that you might not be able to give them. <sighs> okay, but if the only time you ever put your art on display in a, is a live stream during ghoul hours, when am I going to be able to see what you've been working on? Tell you what, when I die, I'll leave you my paintings. Then you can see them all. Maybe they'll be worth millions since I'll be dead. I'd be able to rest easy knowing someone had retroactively given my life value. Hmm. Uh, movies. You three go way back. If you need someone to post your paintings. Want to come ghost hunting with us tonight? Uh, you three go way back. Almost to the womb. I've never heard someone say that. <laughs> The school here is a tiny K-12? What's that? Not exactly a one-room schoolhouse, but not far from it. We're lucky we all got along as much as we did. Some kids weren't able to make friends their own age. They just happened to be born around the same time as some real jerks and were stuck with them through their whole school careers. Poor kids. K-12 kindergarten through 12th grade. Oh. I see. Not that we were free from dealing with jerks, like a certain Scarlet I could name. Okay, she was a little rough around the edges. She was pretty friendly when you got past that. Maybe to you. The way she used to look at me, you think I rolled into something foul every morning before school. <laughs> Same here. Though to be fair, the feeling was more mutual between us. She deserved it, though. Movies? Let me think. Heard of... Shinochi? Deathblood? Yeah, Shinochi. Chi is blood, she is death. I saw that for the first time recently and blew me away. Is that an actual movie? Does anyone know Shinochi? Excellent example of both Japanese horror and found footage done right. We could even put it on after dinner if you guys are interested. I would usually be down for that, but if we, we gotta head over to Oscars after this. We promised we'd ghost bust his place. He's apparently been dealing with bad hauntings. I feel like we should really be there for him tonight, considering everything that's happened. He and Rosalina both need our support right now. Take a rain check on the movie. We'll definitely come by for movie night this week. I'm free tomorrow night, same goes for goobers. I should probably work tomorrow, but I can close up early. Um, want to come ghost hunting with us? Do you think you'd be down for that? We'd love to have you. It'd be great to have you along. That would be so amazing, but I haven't had the best luck leaving the house lately. Even just walking to town is enough to put me in bed for a week. It sucks. But make sure you bring your camera, Stella. I want to see everything that happens. Aww. Dinner's got to be ready right now. 
Almost on cue, Reese's mom shouts from the kitchen. Dinner's on the table! Guess that's it for catching up. Oh, Gonjam, yeah! Gonjam is one of the best. One of the best and creepiest found footage. Uh, Gonjam, if you haven't seen it, I really recommend it. If you can get your hands on it. It's a Korean horror movie about... Um, a group of people going to a haunted asylum and they live stream the whole thing. So they all have like uh, basically a cam on their head and they have a cam that both looks outward and inward to their face. Uh, and they all live stream it and there's a dude in a tent, like a moderator outside who like he manages to stream. So he like switches the cameras and stuff and they go to the haunted asylum and they want to just fake it at first, so they kind of like set up a couple scares, but then obviously the place is actually haunted and it's so good. Gonjam, yeah. It's one of the best horror movies I've seen in the last couple years. It's really like, it takes the cake. Make sure y'all wash your hands with soap. I don't want anyone sharing their germs at the dinner table. Sure thing, Doc. Uh, yes ma'am. You make your way towards the sink, but are stopped in your tracks by the pull of an odd door at the end of the hallway. It pulls me in? Feels out of place, like you've accidentally wandered into a hospital waiting room. But more than that, you feel something radiating out from behind it, something dark and cold. Something that reminds you of the dusty tunnels you narrowly escaped last night. An oppressive hum just behind your hearing fills the air, and you feel strange. You are compelled to approach the door, drawn in as if hypnotized. Oh my god! All the options are open the door. Okay, I'm gonna go with this one. <laughs> Before you know it, the doorknob is turning in your hand, your heart full of both deep dread and a compulsive need to know what might be on the other side. What do you think you're doing? Ooh, well? Something compelling about this door. I need to see what's behind. Looking for the bathroom. Return to the door. You won't let her interrupt you. You need to know what's behind the door. Oh, no, you don't. Come on, wash your hands and sit down. What's behind that door? She grabs you by the shoulder, yanking you away. You do as she says, cleaning up under her, watchful, under her watchful eyes and allowing yourself to be ushered back to the table and away from the door. Hmm... Dinner is already laid out. Dinner rolls, spaghetti, and a light salad. Kanika anxious, anxiously picks at her food. Stella is nervously talkative, and Reese is suddenly quiet and tense, his shoulders tight as his mother perches on the chair next to his. Dr. Kelly eyes all of you with, sharp, with a sharp, fierce gaze. Dr. Kelly sits opposite you at the far head of the table, her features silhouetted against the light of the setting sun in the window behind her. Mm. She slides a few tablets towards Reese. He obediently swallows them. This is excellent, Dr. Kelly. Is the pasta sauce homemade? No, it's from a jar. I worked too many hours to make my own pasta sauce. Well, you have excellent taste in brands. And if you ever want any tips on easy home cooked pasta sauces, you know I. No thanks, Stella. I have the internet if I need recipes. I think I think they all have like salad and bread, but he only has like just pasta. That can't be good. How is he getting any nutrition? Thanks again for having us, Dr. Kelly. We really appreciate it. Give him at least like spinach or something. Spinach is really good. Uh, I think I saw a video about a family likes yours. Turns out the mom was poisoning her kid for 18 years. That's what I was thinking about. I was literally thinking about that. I saw a movie on Netflix that was like that. About Reese. Small talk to danger. <laughs> Can you imagine how mad she would be if you would say that? Does no one in the sound of two parents? Oh my god. That's true, actually. Why is it always just one parent, or no parents? Hmm. 
What exactly does that? It must break your heart having to isolate your son from the world. Do you think Reese might be fooled better if he got to see people more often? Why are you so hell-bent on keeping your son from- This is like a sure way to get kicked out. Reese is a talented artist. You must be very proud. He has a lot of skill honed through practice and dedication. I can't say I understand a lot of his pieces, but of course, I'm proud. Thanks, Doc. Do you think Reese might feel better if he got to see people more often? No. <laughs> I'm his doctor and his mother. You are someone who met him for the first time less than half an hour ago. One of us is a little more qualified to make decisions about his life. You know, Doc, I feel pretty okay. I mean, as okay as I usually do, so still kind of shitty. But I don't think having people over has been as rough on my health as you thought it might be. It's been really nice. Hear that? Reese can, ca can hang out with friends again. If you're still feeling okay after dinner, maybe you can even come ghost hunting with... Oh, jeez, Kanika, what was that for? Don't push it, Stella. Just say that next time instead of kicking me. Your boots are heavy. <laughs> Sorry, Dr. Kelly. We're totally respectful of Reese's boundaries, even though they might seem a little arbitrary and strict. They're not arbitrary. These rules are in place for good reason. Tell me how great you feel in an hour when the exhaustion catches up to you, Reese. You'll be knocked out all evening and regretting every minute of this, let me assure you. As if I would regret being able to see other people for the first time in months. I don't care what happens. It was worth it. Dr. Kelly's eyes briefly, nervously glanced toward her son before flooding back to a position of annoyance. You can't help but feel like what you saw went beyond compassionate worry to be genuine fear. Hmm. Thanks for putting this together, Dr. Kelly. I don't usually have to cook for so many people. I'm just glad there's enough for everyone. It reminded me of what it used to be like when these two would come over. Hungry teenagers eating me out of the house and home. I should have charged your parents for all the food you kids went through, honestly. It was like I was running a restaurant, not a doctor's office. <laughs> oh, the clinic is back there? What were Stella and Kanika like as kids? Noisy and messy, like all kids. <laughs> There's suddenly a wistful look in her eyes, like she's glim glimpsing back to some brighter time in her life. Yeah. Kanika softens too, her shoulders lowering from their defensive place by her ears. They always had those little projects, videos or crafts or animal rescues, whatever it was that had captured their imagination that week. The glimmer of joy at the corner of her eyes fades. Her glow... Her Glower, glower returns in its place. So, like I said, noisy and messy. Didn't we bring a dead squirrel into your house once? <laughs> oh god, not the squirrel. <laughs> I remember it. Didn't you think the doc could Frankenstein it back to life or something? I was like 12! I was very susceptible to what I saw in media. Very sad about that squirrel. <laughs> That's one of these things that keep, keeps me up at night. I still feel guilty about bringing that thing into your house, Dr. Kelly. I'm just glad you didn't make it a habit. How well do you know Tabitha? Not very. I'd know her a lot better if your family didn't seem to be so afraid of doctors. I can count on one hand the number of times she's been in my office. No wonder everyone but that old Edward Dean died so young. Hopefully your mother was better about taking you to doctor's visits. I wouldn't be surprised if there was something genetic at play. It must be... And it's much better to catch those things early. Hmm. That's kind of scary to, that a doctor mentions that to you. Have the police contacted you about Duke's body? Any weird hairless creatures scurrying around the woods? Anyone come in suffering from hallucinations? Have you seen any sick animals lately? I'm a doctor, not a vet. Didn't someone come in with a sick cow last week? Yes, but it's not like I examined the thing. I told them what I just told you and sent them on their way. You said it had lumps. Sure, it had lumps, but I assumed it was suffering from some cow disease. It's not something I've done much research on. I don't know how normal it is for a cow to be covered in lumps. Doesn't that sound like... Ditchlings. Are no farm animals safe from their devious clutches? Dr. Kelly, in Stella's footage, it looked like there was something pupating inside one of Duke's chickens. I bet those were the lumps on the cow. You really should have taken a look. You could have made discoveries previously unknown to the scientific world. 
or I could have spread some new horrible disease to my chronically ill son. I'll leave these discoveries to someone else. Have there been any strange illnesses? What? No. Are you sure you haven't met with any miners who had unusual symptoms? Anyone who seemed sort of drippy? Strangely ominous when they talked? Sorry to pry, just doing my due diligence. Absolutely not. I've been barely I've barely seen so much as a runny nose, which is a good thing. If you're so concerned about the mine, why don't you just have Goobers ask Tabitha? I have no interest in violating HIPAA for your weird little investigation into nothing. Do you know Sam Wayne? Sam Wayne? Dr. Kelly takes a moment to think. No, doesn't ring a bell. Someone you know? Someone's been following goobers around. Super mysterious guy. We have reason to believe he might have caught some kind of weird illness at the mines. He definitely looks like he could use medical help. So please let us know if he shows up or anything. If there's someone harassing you, you should get the police involved. This isn't any of my business. Well, police isn't very helpful. Quietly like picking at store-bought spaghetti and dinner <laughs> rolls. So, we were talking about maybe watching a movie sometime this week, while Goobers is still in town. We'll have to see how you're feeling. I can handle a movie, Doc. Yeah, we'll sit downstairs in the dark. Reese is used to that. I'm sure he'll be okay. You're always overestimating how much you're able to do, Reese. This is why you keep getting sick. If I get sick, so what? It's not like that's ever going to change. I'm sick every day, and I'm not getting better. I don't want to spend the last few miserable years of my life holed up in the basement alone just because seeing my friends hasn't, has been deemed too strenuous. I'm an adult for God's sake. Can't believe I have to ask for permission from my mom just to have friends over. Or... He stops mid-sentence, whistling in pain and wrapping himself in his arms. Oh no. Don't say things like that. I'm doing everything I can to try and fix. Silence as Dr. Kelly's eyes narrow on her son. Reese? Reese abruptly pulls himself from the table and leaves. Damn it, I knew it. I knew this would be too much. Oh shit. Everyone, out of my house. Please, just leave us alone. Stop trying to interfere with his life. All it does is hurt him more. But we can't just leave him like this. Now is when he needs friends the most. Now is when he needs me the most. I am his mother and his doctor. I know you care about him, I know that, and he knows it too, but all any of you would do is get in the way. So just leave, please. Hmm. He seemed fine before dinner. The pills. Do you think it's the pills? Do you think she is poisoning him? She doesn't look evil to me though, she, she just looks like a... Like, yeah, she's strict, but she looks concerned. Um, he seemed fine before dinner. It always comes in waves, and I can assure you that right now he's very much not fine. Now leave. The three of you are rushed to the door. We'll be back, Reese. I hope you feel better soon. Hmm. Dr. Kelly shuts the door in your face. The click of the lock signals the ends of your dinner. I was forced to try and break into the clinic. Forced how? It was like something was making me go there. I wonder, was it like that carving in the pit last night? Before you had that seizure, it was kind of like you were hypnotized. I wasn't there, but I guess I'll take your word on it. Hypnotism seems like a step up from what we've been dealing with, though. I mean, I don't know. A lot happened last night, but the whole thing was very trance-like. I guess it was kind of similar. What if there's another carving in there? That'd be so weird. If there is, I wonder if it'd give you another vision. Maybe these things have something to do with the ditchlings. You're not suggesting we go poking around in there, are you? Of course I am. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> I am not breaking into Dr. Kelly's clinic based on a bad vibe Goobers got. Did either of you get the impression that Dr. Kelly is afraid of Reese? I could have sworn I saw genuine fear in her eyes for a second there. Are you sure you wa she wasn't just being overprotective? 
I'm sure that's all that's going on. She has every right to be. I mean, the poor guy took two bites of food and got sick immediately. Can't imagine what that's like for both of them to go through. If anyone is afraid of anyone in that house, Reese is afraid of his mom. I think you're both reading into it too much. Dr. Kelly is good people. Look, I'm just saying, maybe there's more to their dynamic than him just being sick, but it's not like there's much we can do about it right now. We could probably go back and forth on this for a while. Let's grab Gretchen and get going. The sun is setting and we wouldn't want to miss the second of ghost action. Stella hurries off down the hill, almost as if to run away from what just happened. You and Kanika follow her down <clears throat> the slowly darkening street. Time for ghosts! Lit by the orange hues of the setting sun, the library feels different. What was once a quaint building in a small town now stands as an imposing structure, its walls holding something that stares back at you with menace. Maybe Stella is right. Maybe ghosts aren't real. The rest of tonight is going to be a pleasant break from the evenings of, from the events of past few days. What if the ghost isn't a person, but a specter of a mayor past? Oscar's house is right next to the town hall. Do your powers extend to the undead? Before you enter, a pair of figures in the near, nearby bush catch your eyes there? Oh, here. You can't help but feel that with every passing day, the ditchlings grow bolder. Oh. Hey, cat. Just as its exterior was intimidating in the setting sun, the inside of the library is dark, its shadows deep and foreboding. The meet and greet with the mayor ended quite some time ago, and the throngs of visitors took whatever joy was in this place with them as they left. Hey, Oscar, you back yet? Shh, can, you can't yell in the library. It's against the rules. It's after hours. Rules only apply before 5 p.m. Now it's our domain. Hey, you're here sooner than I expected. Hope dinner went okay. Yeah, it went okay. Reese wasn't feeling up for a longer hangout, unfortunately. Sorry to hear about. Sorry to hear that. It's okay. Just means we have more time to hunt ghosts. I've come fully loaded. Got my EMF reader, temperature gauge, spirit box, infrared camera, UV light, video cameras, salt, flashlights for everybody in case the ghost messes with the electricity, parabolic microphones, sharpies, and paper for automatic writing, matches, and candles for rituals. <laughs> And you got your Spectre sniffing compatriot, compatriot at your side too. This nose can sniff out any nair do well we might find, whether spirit or scoundrel. Oh, and a Ouija board. <laughs> I know they're toys, but you never know what might come in handy. Wow, this is a lot of ghost hunting stuff for something that was so last minute. Do you just have this stuff ready to go in a bug out bag or something? Of course I do. I actually stashed a couple of bags here overnight after I got back from the mines. Damn! Excuse me? I wasn't about to carry everything around all day. This way we can go in light and pop out to grab more stuff once things start getting spooky. I may never have found any compelling evidence of ghosts, but that's not for lack of trying. And after last night, I'm more than ready to try again. There are ditchlings in the bushes outside. Yeah, we should maybe mention that. Who knows how many more are lurking around here? Hmm, that's concerning. Are we sure it's safe to be around them? If Sybil's right, we're only going to see more of them as time goes on. We can't let them get in the way of things. This whole town is one big supernatural death trap. Those mines were chock full of ghosts last night. There's nothing unexplainable about the mine collapse. Whatever weird stuff we saw last night was probably just a gas leak. There could always be a rational, non-supernatural explanation, like aliens. Chock full of ghosts. After all my fruitless ghost hunts, I basically convinced myself that ghosts weren't real. But last night we saw some really convincing evidence. Especially those figures she mentioned. Though I'm still 50-50 on whether they were cryptids or ghosts. Hopefully whatever happens tonight will clear that up. Can't wait to wander through Oscar's house for a few uneventful hours before getting Rosalina tucked into bed. I could use a nice quiet night after everything we went through. 
I envy your pessimism here, but I suppose it won't be long until we get to the bottom of things. Hey, Zane. Yo, don't rush off ghost busting without Zane. No way was I gonna forget your promise, Stella. Zane, glad you could make it. I was confronted with my own mortality for the first time yesterday, so I'm desperate for answers about the afterlife to ease my troubled mind. Now let's go mess with some ghosts. <laughs> my oh my, this certainly is a lot of humans for one little ghost hunt. I do hope this means my dear Stella will be safe this evening and that whatever foul creatures lurk in the shadows choose to prey on someone else. I hope my house is big enough for five ghost hunters at once. If this is everyone, we can go ahead and get started. It's through the back. Follow me. Wee, Pixel! Hey, human! Kick ghost ass, okay? I miss special tree. <laughs> you and your companions grab some equipment from one of Stella's carefully stashed bug out bags before heading towards the junction connecting, connecting Oscar's house and the library. Ooh, that's so pretty! Looks like the sun is almost set. This is when stuff usually starts to kick off. I haven't been back inside for about a week, so I have no idea what to expect. Hey! Ah, Rosalina's here too. You didn't think you'd be doing this without me, did you? Rosalina, I thought you were at Alexis's place. Sorry, Mr. Gutierrez. She's really convincing. Oh, hi Zane, what's up? Yo. You don't have to leave me out of stuff like this anymore, Dad. I'm not some fragile thing that needs protecting. I can handle seeing a ghost, or whatever it is that's keeping us out of our house. I really don't think you want to see what's in there, Rosalina. I don't know if you'd ever be able to feel safe in our house again if you knew what was there. Let her come with us, it's her house too. Oh, image Oscar... Not found? <laughs> I'm glad you agree. Best to give this pup a chance to face her obstacles head on. Exactly. Come on, Dad, if you're letting Zane tag along. Alexis and I have every right to be there, too. She's got a good point, Mr. G. Yeah, we can totally handle this. Okay, I'm sorry, Rosa. Just let me know if it gets too much and you want to leave, okay? Thanks, Dad. Now let's get our house back. You all cross over to the threshold and enter Oscar's living room. Family photos line the walls and stacks of books sit comfortably on wooden furniture. It must have been bad though to think that if it's bad enough for them to like avoid the house for a week, that's pretty intense. Aside from the painting on the floor, this living room feels too normal, too human to be haunted. Looks pretty normal for now. I don't remember that picture being on the floor, but that could be non-supernatural. None of my equipment is picking up anything around the picture. But I'll set up a camera in case it falls again. Could be important evidence. You might want to save your cameras for Rosalina's room. That's where I've seen the ghost manifest. Ooh. I wonder if the ghost will even show with this many people around. Oh dear, could be someone... Could someone please warm the air back up? My joints are creaking in this dreadful chill. Is it just me or does it suddenly feel colder? Sure did. I definitely feel that. This looks like the... The one you use in... Phasmophobia. The temperature gun says it's actually a couple of degrees colder, but that's normal. Rooms and hallways are sometimes colder than other parts of the house. Check the doors. Oh! Yeah, you're right. There's already someone there. Oh, and here too, by the window. Wow, a genuine cold spot. I gotta snap a pig for posterity. Is that it? This isn't very scary. Uh, shouldn't you have seen it? I feel a presence lie. Let's see some action. Scared, let's just leave. Alright, gang, I think we'll cover more ground if we split up and search for clues. Explore. If the ghost mostly manifests in your room, shouldn't you have seen it? I've only seen the stain. Dad made me switch rooms with him way before he moved out. I wasn't about to let my daughter sleep in a haunted bedroom. I spent most of my nights on the couch before we set up shop in the library. Even if there is something back there, I'm not scared of it. I'm mad at it. 
Y'all are so brave. I'd be terrified sleeping somewhere that might have a ghost. Hmm. We'll cover more ground if we split up and search for clues. Maybe it's just shy. It's possible that it doesn't like crowds. It's only ever shown itself while I was alone. Dad, you said it usually comes out at night, right? I guess that means it still has time to show up. I thought you weren't convinced any of this was real, Rosa. My dad believes in it in it this much. I'm gonna keep an open mind. God, what if it is just all in my head? I'm not sure if I'd be more it'd be more of a relief or an embarrassment. I don't know. This cold spot is pretty solid evidence. Though I won't be satisfied until we see a full-bodied apparition. Yo, Mr. G, how, like, scary does this guy look? Gotta know what to keep my eyes up for. It's a 10. Definitely a 10. Dope. Maybe we should, like, split up. I want to make sure someone sees this thing. Never split up in, in stories. Absolutely not. I think we all know how that would go. That's definitely a no-go. If we discover a ghost here, I want us all to discover it together. That's not exactly the angle I was going for, but okay. <laughs> Oscar takes a deep breath before continuing. Let's uh, head to Rosalina's room. Follow me. Oh, that's a big stain. That feeling again. Like the mines, the door to the clinic. A dusty, suffocating, dizzying feeling. Something is in the house, though whether it's a ghost or something worse, you aren't sure. Whoa. This is where I've seen it. It appears on top of the stain. Do you mean this massive blood stain? It stinks to high heaven. Weird, I'm not getting anything. It's not even cold. It's the same temperature as the living room. Nothing on EMF either. Then your equipment is wrong. The stain is definitely paranormal. I've scrubbed it out too many times to count and it just keeps coming back. Have you checked under the carpet? Maybe it's a leak. It's just a stain, Dad. Can't we just cover it back up? I don't mind sleeping in here. Hmm, let's get scientific about this. If you've scrubbed the stain out a bunch, maybe that's part of a summoning ritual. If y'all are offering free carpet cleaning, be my guest. Gretchen says it's a blood stain. <laughs> I love how I can talk to ghost blood animals. It's just a rusty pipe leaking all over your floor. That was my guess, yeah. I think that would be a bigger problem than what Goobers and Stella are suggesting. Have y'all tried ripping up the carbon and see what's causing the stain? The government owns this house. There's no way I'm leaving a big red stain in their carpet. I made sure it was pristine every morning. Besides, I also kind of assumed it was ghost blood, which it is. What if there's something written under there? Only one way to be sure. Hell yeah, Stella. Stella excitedly starts tugging at the corner of the carpet. Are we digging? Let me help. This is my area, my area of expertise. Oh dear. You're doing the government a favor, really. Mm, no. Stella pulls back the carpet, revealing a hatch. The floor around it stained in reddish brown. There's a broken seal around the edges. Whoever carpeted over this hatch didn't want anyone going down there. What if there isn't a ghost after all? What if somebody lives down there? That's true. Okay, maybe I don't want to sleep in here. Oh god, what if there's someone secretly living under your floor and comes out at night to steal your food? <sighs> Although I don't think you could... Like, the carpet would have to be moved. I don't think you can easily get out otherwise. Broken seal around the edges. Someone doesn't want us down there. Yeah, but how long ago was it sealed up? Whoever did this has got to be long gone, right? There's no basement in this house. At least, we weren't told about a basement. And look, all the red stuff is coming from underneath. Oh yeah, this is super haunted, alright? You got a basement chuck full of goo ghosts. I can just feel it. Y'all know last month was super rainy. It's clearly been a long time since anyone stepped foot in the basement or crawl space or whatever it is under that hatch. There must be a leak that flooded the whole area. Oh, that could be it. The water dissolved the caulk around the edge and leaked through the carpet. And it, it's red because North Carolina has red ass dirt. Simple as that. It's not mud, it's blood. Human blood. I tested it. <gasps> you did? 
Maybe you tested it wrong? It can't be blood, right? Whatever it is, I need to know what's down there. I need to know what's been under my bed all these years. Yeah! There's an old hash on the floor that someone tried to seal up. We're not leaving until we've explored every nook and cranny. Have you considered that maybe they may have tried up sealing they may have tried sealing it up because it's unsafe? Do you think the flooding could have made the house unstable? I'm all in on ghost hunting, but I don't know if I could crawl into another dangerous crevice. Wait, what? I'm hallucinating again. You come to in Oscar's living room. You can't tell what time it is and your friends are nowhere in sight. It's different, like some of the frames are different. The building feels colder and there's something about the air that feels wrong. It's stale with an undercurrent of mold and earth. You feel claustrophobic as though you're in a coffin, each breath depleting what little oxygen is left. Oh, hey, Pete. <laughs> He's just right in the corner here. Uh, anybody there? There's no reply. I don't think your phone is working. Eddie? You can hear something drop violently on the other end, and then a dial tone. You put your phone away. This clearly isn't getting you anywhere. Whatever just happened was weird, but your friends are probably still in Rosalina's room. You head further into the house. Uh What? Something isn't right. It feels like a late summer afternoon. The air is warm and wet, and the scent of flowers drift on the breeze. Oh, Jesus! Movement stirs as a figure cloaked in shadows rises to attention. Gretchen! Who are you? What are you doing on my property? Stella? Oh! Did you say Eddie? No one called me that in a long time. It's Edward Dean now. I'm not a child out anymore. Wait, wasn't Edward Dean the aunt? Okay, this is definitely a dream. I wish I could say the same. You should have stayed gone. You absolutely shouldn't have shown up here of all places. And if you're, if you're caught, I don't think you understand what father might do. Um, I think we should play along. I'm not scared of father. A flash of pain in Stella's eyes tells you that she's keenly aware of everything that's happening right now. She's in agony. I can't. It's not that easy for me. My brothers were sent to the Western Front, and now I'm the only Scarlet left besides father. I have responsibilities, Charlie. Gretchen, can you still talk to me? Silence. We should just get out of town while you still can. Whatever you came back for, it's not worth it. Let her go, please. Whoa! She's gone along with the shadow in the corner of the room. You're alone again in the strange garden. Follow her! You move to follow the narrow path through the foliage. As you step forward, a single door standing solitary in the middle of the garden appears before you. We can walk past it? You know what? I haven't saved at all today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, do I just return? Okay. <laughs> I just realized I hadn't saved. Okay. I think whatever, wherever we are, it's trying to show us something. So it probably showed us the door. So I'm going to go in. There's actually a journal above the save icon. Oh yeah, that's true. You walk up to the door and open it. Whoa. Bells ring as a cacophony rages outside. 
The door in front of you pulsates as figures unseen bang against it. The shaded figure from the garden sits in the corner, ever so slightly more defined. Wait, shaded figure from the garden? Oh! Rosalina! Junior, pack your things! Quickly, hurry! Maybe we should run him on out on a trip on a rail too, make an example of the whole family. I'll pack real good. Please, he's only a child. We'll leave peacefully. Just give us a little time. They were only children too. My boy wasn't there. Why should I give Junior here all the time in the world to gather his little toys and fancy clothes? My boy didn't have that kind of luxury. The collapse, Junior leaving, Charlie returning. It's all starting to come together. They're the same person. Junior and Charlie are the same person. You're talking about the collapse, aren't you? Keep listening. The collapse. Don't listen to him, Charlie. Just keep packing. Looks like the others are on their way. Better hurry, boy, or you and your little dolls here might get burned up. And as for you, lady, what makes you think you're gonna be keeping any of those valuables you're packing in that fine suitcase of yours? Um... I'm not scared of you. <laughs> I'm a little scared. <laughs> Trust me, boy, the coppers ain't come in here tonight, and what makes you think you can talk to an adult like that? Maybe they should have had you working in the mines too, instead of lazing around in this big house. Maybe you would have learned a thing or two about respecting your elders. Don't talk to my son like that. Don't talk to me like that, woman. I call the shots. Now get out unless you want to go up in flames with all your precious jewels and expensive dresses. You're lucky I'm even letting you leave. Address the shadow. Am I supposed to be you? It's okay, Charlie. You can make new ones, even better than these. It's good for him. Shouldn't be playing with dolls anyway. Now you're gonna have to earn your keep just like the rest of us, boy. No more big inheritance for you. Alexis and Rosalina are whisked away, leaving you behind in an empty room. As they depart, the front door stops pounding and opens into a beckoning white void. Before you have the chance to think, another door creaks open on what you thought was the ceiling. Oh! Behind my cam. There you are. Uh, there he is. In the corner. This is quite the maze, isn't it? And absolutely crawling with these miserable little parasites. Bottom feeders. Jeez. Talk. How did you get down here? Those are not good questions. I want to, like, ask who he is or... What's up? You're no longer threatened by me. Good. Maybe now we can be friends. As he approaches, a smell hits you. Sweating, suffocated flesh with a tinge of the saccharine and stomach-churning scent of decay. Shall we find the end of this little maze? Oh shit, we need to make a choice. Do we want to go into darkness or into the void? I would say the white one, but I'm not sure. Yeah, let's do white. Okay. Uh, I'm back. Oh, what kind of trip is this? Oh, he's still here. He's behind the camp. 
You're outside and it's night, a false moon looming massive in the painted sky. Wayne is gone. The night feels thick and warm, the insects lively, their call unnaturally tinny. Everything feels warped and wrong, like you're listening to a record fished from the bottom of a pond. Unless your eyes are playing tricks on you, the shadow in the corner keeps getting closer. Oh no! You poor dear. I've been keeping track of you, scuttling around town like a tomcat. You've fallen hard for Miss Edwardine, haven't you? I want to get off this right now. Who are you supposed to be? You're trying to scare me, it's not working. I'll watch another little play, listen to the figure. You quietly let the figure continue. There's no need to be embarrassed. Your secret's safe with me. You know, I never did approve of what the Scarlet did to your family. And what it did to the two of you young'uns. Childhood sweethearts. Just think how lovely it would be if you could just be happy together. That's what you want, isn't it? The plot thickens. Are you mad because Edwardine and Charlie's romance didn't work out? I'm sure by now you've realized the young lady doesn't plan on leaving with you. But it's not for lack of desire, as you well know. It's Enoch. Even if you dragged her out of over town limits, his hold over her would make sure neither of you were ever happy again. Just think of what happened to your poor mother and father. Do you want that to be the two of you? Enoch is one of my ancestors, right? I think I read about him yesterday. The powers at work. Can I? Wait, can I open this during this? Ah. Can't. Oh. Whoa! Creepy sounds! Everything you need to know is on that map. What? Oh, I think I by clicking the journal, I clicked in the game. Uh, what's that about misfortune and stepping foot outside the holler? It's town cursed. Breaking of bonds. Acquiring a map. Sounds like a quest. I shall do as you say. That's where you'll find them. You need her there, then read what I've written down. And be careful. Good luck to the both of you. I hope you get your happiness. And she's gone. Oh god, he's back! It's trying to get rid of me. I'll, it'll have to try harder. So, some force is trying to give us this information. And he is the evil force trying to stop it. It's trying to get rid of me. Run for it. You run into the uncanny underbrush before hearing another word. Oh god. Once again you find yourself separated and alone. A long wooden corridor stands before you, littered with bottles and rails. Zack. Or what was his name? A figure rises to attention, blocking your way. Zane, that was it. I'm afraid he doesn't have long. If there's anything you need to say him, say to him, I'd say it now. Oh no. As Zane is swept away, the room pulls itself to you and you find yourself looming over a deathbed. Oscar lies in its center, looking pitifully small. I'm sorry, boy. Sorry. I let my troubles drive your mama away. And sorry those troubles mean I'm leaving you all alone now. You see a shadow? I see the hands and this face. Yeah, the noises are upsetting. That looks excruciating. You must be Charles Shaw. You must be Charles Shaw. Damn it, Junior. How many times do I have to tell you? I tried to stop it from happening, but the damned snake Enoch went behind my back. 
Enoch was the one responsible for the collapse. You're right. I've been using that excuse for too many years. At a certain point, a man has to accept when he's dug his own grave. They may have run me out, but they didn't put the bottle in my hand. Still, they destroyed our legacy, boy. Both our names are cursed with that history. I'll be dead and gone soon, but I won't be able to rest. Not until our name is cleared. Not until you can pass on this name with pride. This is my only request, Charlie. Go back there. Tell people the truth. Try to find proof. I don't know what you'll have to do, but please. I know I ain't been the best father, but I am no murderer. So Scarlet's were exposed for the collapse, Tabitha and I probably wouldn't be around. Is that why you were getting close with Everdeen in the garden? All right, Dad. I won't let you down. Damn it, boy. I may not have till the morning. Promise me you'll go back and at the very least show that Enoch bastard what for. Promise. Oh. Oh. You watch as Oscar's body seizes and falls through the sheets, taking the rattling pile of bottles with him. Such theatrics. Oh, he's right there! <laughs> what a waste of time. Why force you to see any of this? People always think their own experience are so important, but what does any of it matter? He's so close. I don't know if I can run. You bolt for the hole in the bed and dive in. Oh, that's where you're going? Oh, he's still there. For the first time, you and Wayne enter a new room at the same time. The two of you finding yourself huddled under a large table. Stella stares through you as indecipherable murmurs and shuffling feet echo from the ends of the table. Yep, yep, yep. They're so lovely. Are you sure I can keep one? You must have worked very hard on them. Gotta be near the end, right? That music is the same song that started playing when Stella first showed up. Huh. Just let the scene play out. There's no use trying to communicate, whether with the resonant or your little friends. I'll try to keep it away from my brothers so they don't smash it. Though I wish I could make it move like you can. And you can even do the voices, you know. You could probably make real money if you put on a show for people. Oh, that's why everyone's been moving, because they he's got a thing for puppets, so they're like being puppeteered. Uh you can't tell me what to do. I talk as much as I want. I want to console my friend in case she can hear me. Please don't engage with it while I try to find another door. A traveling show. And you want me there too? Oh, could we go to town? Along towns along the beach. I've heard the Outer Banks are the most beautiful place in the world. I wish I could go back in time to whenever this was and tell them everything I know. As if it would do any good. Thank you, Charlie. I've always wanted to see the ocean. Everything crashes to a thunderous black before you or Wayne can get into another word. Oh, can get another word in. Ooh. So he is the puppeteer. Oh no, even the dog! They're bowing! A single spotlight remains, illuminating a trapdoor in the center of the stage. You feel drawn to it. It opens. You feel a shove from behind and tumble through the hatch. <gasps> Another seal? That's a different one than we saw before. It took some digging, but it's there. The map was right. That means there's hope, Eddie. Whatever it is that Enoch did, we can undo it. Such so Charlie and Edwardine, what's the name? We can be happy together. Oh. Eddie? Damn. So Charlie was the one under the floor. 
Wayne is gone once again. There's nothing here but you and the howling void. Do you repent? Repent for your crimes? She's not here, but my cousin Tabitha is the one you want. So yeah, I'm being punished because it's my family's fault? You gotta let this go, man. Get over it. I'm sorry you died. You must answer for the crimes committed by your scarlet blood. Yeah. Until you do, I cannot die. I want to die, please. I have been alone in the dark for so long. All I ask is for some of your years. To pay for the years that were taken from me. My life was stolen from me. I want some of yours. It's only fair. Sins of the father are to be laid upon the children. Forfeit your years and I will finally leave. I don't understand. You will live a shorter life and I will finally be satisfied. I will have justice. I will finally die. I will leave this house at last. How much shorter? Yeah, how many years do I lose? That isn't for you to know. Just as it wasn't for me to know. One day, sooner than you'd like, you will die. What happens if I refuse? Then I will stay. I will stay until I get what I'm owed. The sentence has been handed down. Make your choice. A smell hits you. A now familiar wet, unwell odor. What an annoying pest you are, but you couldn't keep me out for long. It seems we've exhausted its power. Holding all these bodies hostage must have been quite taxing. Come along, goobers. It's desperate, but it has no power over you. There's no need to bow to the will of such a frayed or broken consciousness. Leave it to fester. What about my friends? They've already left. They're not a factor in this. Oh god, what should we do? I honestly, personally, I don't think I would give up my years for something that my forefathers did that I have nothing to do with. Leave it to fester and keep causing problems. Yeah, I don't know. But I don't think I would give up sacrifice pay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I would do that. I don't think it's fair to put that on someone's children who have nothing to do with it. Um, but I can't leave the ghost here. You can. Hmm. Where will they live? Don't give years of your life for something so insignificant. Okay. better make this count. You don't need my help. Close your eyes. Feel for the stairs. You close your eyes. You fumble in the darkness, reaching out your hands and grasping the air until your palm finds wood. It's the staircase. You can feel it under your hands. You begin your ascent. Good, you've made it out of the pit. His overpowering smell returns as you place a confident foot on the wooden floor of what you assume must be Rosalina's room. You open your eyes as you try to hold your breath. Whoa, we're not out yet. You feel a hand on your back. You shudder, knowing, knowing what it's attached to. Don't fall for it. Keep feeling your way forward. You continue. You feel the door frame under your palm and then the sturdy walls of the hallway beyond. Wayne's palm continues to gently urge you forward. So Wayne is actually a good person then. You stumble into the corridor between the annex and library. The real world is swimming back into focus. The main doors are just ahead. You feel a shove as Wayne pushes you forward. You fall towards the entrance, your legs still unsure of the ground beneath you, and the doors fly open. Oh, everyone's out. You're outside. It's real this time. A cool autumn breeze blows small piles of dried leaves across the steps of the library. 
You made the right choice. It would have been so easy to fall for its tricks. I'm proud that you didn't. Be seeing you. He just leaves? He leaves before you can say anything in response. Thank God you made it out, Goobers. I went to get Mom when I realized she hadn't left the library with the rest of us. I figured if any anyone knew what to do, it'd be her. Wait, where's the dad? And Zane? I see someone beat me to the punch. Sounds like you've had quite the evening. Oh, there he is. Now we're just missing one. I suppose I'll have to find another place for me and Rosalina to stay. This was such a disaster. I'm so sorry to have brought you all into that house. I should have left the place to rot. You and Rosalina could always stay with us, Mr. Gutierrez. I wouldn't want to impose on your parents like that. It's a lot to ask. I can figure this out. Ah, there he is. Wait, so everyone made it? Oh yeah, impending doom coming is more important than the single ghost. I have to be at my best if we're going to get to the bottom of this. We need to regroup and think about our options. I wasn't going to make a deal like that in the heat of a moment. I just don't think I could have handled the uncertainty of an early death. Couldn't trust a ghost to uphold its end of the deal. I wasn't about to give up part of my life for a house. That's true. Something I didn't do. This is this is me, I think. That's what I was saying. Uh, maybe the government can rent you another house. I wasn't about to give up part of my life to make amends for something I didn't do. It's okay. It's just a house. We don't even own it. And even if we did, that ghost was asking for quite the down payment. Oscar's right. And besides, there's no walking this back. The spirit is far too strong for that now. Um, don't let your pride get in the way of a roof. I'm really sorry you couldn't get rid of your ghost. Don't apologize. I wouldn't want you to lose something that important for a rental unit owned by the state. Honestly, if it makes you feel better, I don't think I could have lived with the guilt if you'd made that choice. Are you sure you can take up Alexis' offer? Oscar sighs. You're right, you're right. I'm gonna peace out. Back-to-back -back encounters with my own mortality. I got a lot to ponder. See you, Rosalina, Alexis. Zane walks off down the road. To think that ghosts are actually real. I mean, I know we don't have any hard evidence on us, but we all vividly experience the same thing. Stella's got to be over the moon right now. Where is Stella? I kind of thought she'd be excitedly rattling off theories by now. Oh, she's standing there by herself. That's not like her. Is she okay? I was wondering the same thing. We just saw a ghost and she's just standing off by herself. Which is like fair. That's a normal reaction. Well, I think it might imply that maybe her parents. Are you okay? What? Oh. Yeah, I'm fine. I'll see you guys later. Oh, she is not fine. She hurries off down the road. I think she took the brunt of things in there. No wonder she's having a hard time right now. I'm starting to think Stella might be a bit of a flake. She's hit her limit, she'll be fine. She didn't seem okay. She's a strong girl. She had to she's had to grapple with a lot of turmoil in her life. She can handle an evening like this. All of you should be taking after Stella right now, to be honest. You've all been through something awful, and each and every one of you needs rest. Especially you, Kanika. We don't want that cold of yours to get any worse. God, what a disaster this whole night has been. I had no idea it would turn out like this. I'm so sorry, everyone. Stop apologizing, Dad. We're the ones who don't have a house anymore. We don't even have the library. There was another carving in there. I wonder if those things are tied to everything supernatural that's been happening. Yeah, I wonder. One is a coincidence, but two of them on back-to-back -back nights? And if you and Stella are right and there is another one in the clinic... I'm sorry, I'm a little lost. Have you been finding carvings around town? Wait, what if... What if there is another carving like that at uh, Reese's place and that's what's making him sick? 
I'm sure everyone here could stand around theorizing about this and that all night long. There will be plenty of time for that tomorrow. It could be like the carving is like connected to him and that's why he's like, his visions are like made into art. Do any of you know who you were supposed to be? No idea. There's no context, nothing. There was a weird feeling, like an overwhelming guilt. I was so angry. I was mostly just scared. I didn't feel any of those things. I felt, I don't know how to describe it, powerful. Spent a lot of time with Wayne. Yeah, I noticed. We could smell him as soon as we snapped out of it. What happened? Did he hurt you? He actually helped us. I think he's harmless. He had plenty of opportunities to hurt me in there, but he didn't even touch me. He's never touched you yet. It's hard to find that reassuring. We don't need trouble. We don't need to trouble Goobers for the details. No one pay any mind to that man. He's just a drifter. He'll be gone soon enough. In the meantime, steer clear and he won't make trouble. I'm really sorry. It's okay. Worst things have happened to people and the price was just too high. We'll find a way to th pick things up. I know you did everything you could for us, Goobers. It probably was smart not to trust that ghost anyways. You won't have to do it alone, Oscar. You can help yourself to whatever you need from the store. This is a good town full of good people. Goobers, we won't let this ruin Oscar. What do we do about the library? We can always board it up until the ghost goes away, right? The mines were boarded up and that just made us want to go down there even more. We can't just tell them it's mega haunted. Even if folks believe us, that'll just make them want to investigate for themselves. We'll say there's a gas leak. That should do the trick. Hmm, smart. Sybil, is there a chance this goes away on its own? I'm not really an authority on these things, but it doesn't seem interested in fading away. That's settled then. We boarded up. Say there was a gas leak. Just hope no one gets curious, I guess. It's the best we can do for now. Were you all conscious? Everyone glances at each other. Yeah. Pretty sure we remember everything. At least up until that guy showed up and snapped us out of it. Wayne, he's been following Goobers around. What did he say to you? Like I said, let's not trouble Goobers about him. Just stay away, all of you. What was it like, being puppeted? They all glance away. It hurt. Why didn't I make the kids stay behind? I can't believe I let that happen to them. That this might be the overwhelming pain and exhaustion talking, but shut up. I love you. <laughs> None of this is your fault. I had no idea what I was going to say until the words were already spilling out, but I remember each and every one of them. It's like they were burdened to my memory. You poor souls. Can't begin to imagine what you've all been through. We should probably get going. It's starting to get chilly out and I don't want to keep Alexis' parents up too late. I'll be over later tonight with some bedding and hot tea. I'll make Miles bring you groceries in the morning. Don't be a stranger and let us know if you need anything, okay? Thank you. That really means a lot. I believe it's time for me to get my daughter home as well. But, Kanika dear, you haven't been feeling well. You need to get some rest. Okay. Kanika rarely treks back to the general store. I'll walk you home after I finish getting Kanika her tea and we can chat about what just happened. I'll just be a moment. Too tired to say no. Hmm, I want us to just go to Stella. You make yourself comfortable for a few minutes while you wait. After everything that's happened tonight, the normalcy of sitting on a quiet, empty road feels like a priceless treasure. I hope you don't mind, but I took the liberty to call your cousin and tell her about what happened tonight. Ah, damn it! She wasn't exactly thrilled to hear from me, but I think I blunted her anger as much as I could. Shall we head out for our walk? Oh, I guess I can only go home. Too bad. You once again find yourself on the long track back up to the estate. The night feels cold, the crunch of leaves beneath your feet deafening in the quiet wilderness. So many little creatures. Let's stop here for a bit. These old bones need a moment to rest. Titchling's everywhere. There are, and I'm afraid that they still would be this numerous even if you had managed to exercise the spirit you encountered tonight. Its presence was merely a symptom of the rot in this place, rather than its cause. 
People are unfortunately just going to have to get used to the sight of these things in the coming days. Are you a witch? Everdeen killed Charles Jr., but it feels like I'm only scratching the surface of things. What has my family done? Is that what the spirit showed you? Your family built one of the most powerful coal empires in Appa- Oh, I still don't know how to say that. Those sorts of things don't come out without betrayal and bloodshed. These are all assumptions, of course. I'm just an old woman who enjoys her tea. And the Scarlet Empire is far older than these rattling bones. If you want the bloody details, I'm afraid you'll have to find them yourself. Stone carving of a goat's head. And a pack of wolves in that basement. There was something similar in the mines last night, too. A circle of her arms and chains. Both of them, both of them gave me visions. Was there now? That's quite an interesting development. Perhaps we can discuss these visions over tea tomorrow, see if we can piece things together. Sounds nice. Lovely. I'll be looking forward to it. That's enough rest for me. Let's carry on. You walk deeper into the woods, getting closer to the estate. Ah, uh, so many. One last rest and we'll get you home. Um, what is Wayne? It's like I said, he's just the man. What's wrong with him? It's not exactly polite to share people's medical history. I may not have taken a Hippocratic oath, but I still respect the privacy of others. That doesn't mean you should trust him, though. Be careful with that one. Why can't I just go home to my real home? You poor dear, this is your real home. It's hard to have the sensitivity to feel these things, but on some level, it called you back here. Nobody really leaves the holler, at least not forever. Call it a quirk of the town. You're right, aren't you? <laughs> oh my, you look absolutely horrified. I was just pulling your leg, dear. People leave town all the time. We just haven't been blessed with the most frequent public tra transportation. Wayne didn't want to make me... Wayne didn't want to make a deal with that ghost. Of course he didn't. Some people will never understand the kind of sacrifice that was laid upon the table tonight. If you'd gone through with the deal, it would have been an affront to everything he is. Are you a witch? No, dear. Though some might call me one. I'm just an old woman who fancies herself a bit of a healer. Hmm, I'll leave it at that. Thank you for patiently waiting with an old woman, Goobers. I feel spry as a spring chicken. You and Sybil trek through the remainder of the woods and find yourself on the outskirts of the estate. I'm looking forward to continuing our chat tomorrow once you've had some time to rest. Good luck handling Tabitha. I tried to soften her up over the phone, but there's only so much softening you can do with someone that prickly. Bless her heart. <laughs> Get a good rest, Goobers. You've earned it. Sybil heads back through the woods, leaving you alone to face Tabitha. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> you open the door to the estate as quietly as you can, only to find your cousin anxiously pacing in the foyer. She's been waiting. So you finally came back. After last night, I thought we were done with all the running around and secrecy. I guess I was too optimistic. Do you know how stuff like this Im impacts me? Do you even care? I need to talk to you about some stuff. Now's really not the time. Oscar's house was haunted by the ghost of Charles Shaw Jr., who was murdered by Edward Dean Scarlet. It wanted years of my life in exchange for leaving, but I wasn't about to give it what it wanted. Was there a gas leak in the library or something? Do you realize how ridiculous you sound right now? Uh... Where are Oscar and Rosalina supposed to live, Tabitha? That ghost is our family's fault. It was a ghost. Hmm. Wayne followed me into Oscar's house. Do you think mentioning that awful man is supposed to garner sympathy for me or something? So you do know him. Did I ever say I didn't? He's a creep from a bad time in my life, and I do my best not to think about him, which has become an increasingly difficult task. What is he? 
Sick man that you should avoid. If I could get him to stop talking to you, I would. He's not a decent man, I used to know. Um, one of those stones again. Gave me another vision. Like last night? That was gas. I'm sure whatever you thought you saw tonight was similar. Maybe you had another seizure. All the more reason you shouldn't run off and not tell me where you are. Who put them there? You expect me to know? You're probably some kind of... They're probably some kind of ancient artifact. I'm not an archaeologist. Have you been getting enough sleep? You sound a little delirious. What if they're the cause? I've yet to see any evidence of the supernatural. This feels like a distraction from me being mad at you. They've been telling me a lot about our family. I think we've done terrible stuff, Tabitha. And all of it is probably your imagination because there are hallucinations stemming from either gas or, I don't know, your own guilt and exhaustion. City folk love to self-flagellate. Leave it at that. That's pretty much it. Great, then I'm going to bed. Cousin walks off, leaving you alone. <laughs> Here we are, back again. You don't even notice yourself entering the guest room and falling into bed. Suddenly you're just there, buried under your family's musty covers. Before your thoughts can drift away to nightmarish recollections of, our, of hours past, your phone buzzes on the nightstand. Stella! Sorry I ran off earlier. Wound up in a really bad headspace. Care about you so much. Just need some time to get a handle on things. Sorry. <gasps> call her. Do you need to talk? I should probably ask before I call. You put your phone back on the nightstand. Oh no, that was it? Nearly half a week has passed since you first arrived in town, and a little over half a week remains until the bus comes to take you home. The spirit of Charles Shaw Jr. now commands the entirety of City Hall, swirling a void of wrath and despair that the people of this town will have to learn to ignore. Disaster looms its tallest yet over Scarlet Hollow. Damn. That turned out to be really trippy. Definitely didn't expect... I, I honestly half expected the ghost night, the ghost hunting night, not to get go anywhere. Like, just kind of spooky, maybe a vision, but like, not an actual trip, you know? That was great. I hope we can find something about, like, the family line uh, later on, so we can see, like, like, how we're related to Edward Dean, the other ones. Thank you so much for playing. Episode 4 released before the end of the year. Oh, we don't have to wait so long. Yes. I should probably save here. Yay. There we are. That was it. That was a long one for us. Two and a half hours. Oh, no, wait. Yeah. Hey, that's me. <laughs> that's it. Oh, that was good. So it said the next episode, they're hoping to get it out by the end of the year. So maybe later this year? Maybe it'll be like a cozy December stream? <laughs>